ancient story, go run and go tell it, you've been good to me, got a testimony, your redemption story, go run and go tell it, you've been good to me, oh, oh, oh glory, hallelujah, I can't run it when he set me free, God's been good. Thank you so much for being with us here this morning. This week has been an incredible week here for Central Nebraska. There are so many things going on. And so we just want to say thank you for joining us here this morning. And for um, those of us who um, attend here regularly, it's not, it's not an ordinary service today. It's going to be a little bit out of the ordinary, but we are so excited. Um, we are going to get to hear from Operation Christmas Child this morning, and we also get to hear a wonderful testimony this morning from Mel. So we're looking forward to all of that and hearing about the work of God in many people's lives. And so let's continue on in worship this morning with a wonderful hymn, Deeper, Deeper. seated. Good morning. Everybody hear me okay? All right. Well, I'm doing announcements today and uh, just want to walk welcome the Operation Christmas Child. Uh, we got three here. They'll get up here and uh, discuss their uh, operation here in a little bit. Um, just want to start out by with the uh, first thing is all committee meeting is going to be tomorrow at 7 p.m. Um, if you plan to attend an, or if you're part of a committee, please show up at 7 tomorrow. Um, 
Tuesday's evening is Bible study. This actually begins this upcoming Tuesday from 7 to 8.30. It'll be a seven-week class. And please, if you have any questions, please contact Pastor Daniel. And then the next piece, uh, have Mr. Ryan Hall speak. <laughs> Do I need this? <laughs> yeah, but you talk so quiet. <laughs> so, we had the issue with the AC. We didn't, didn't ever think it would go through this way, but it's all getting covered under the lightning strike claim from over a year ago. We are getting completely new AC and heat, both. And it's already in the works. It'll be installed in the next two to three weeks. So... Praise God for that. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's definitely a praise God moment. We have many of those in our lives. We should be thankful for God. And, you know, today we come to church and we give thanks to God for, for everything he does in our lives. And, and uh, man, I'm grateful for, for you guys being here. I'm grateful for God just watching over us today. Um, as we go into uh, the, the rest of, of the, the notes here, I have... Greeter and ushers, please sign up in the north lobby for Sundays if you are available, um, which is right over there. Um, same thing with the nursery. So I'm now in charge of the nursery. Um, anybody who wants to sign up, please, uh, there's a schedule, there's a sign-up sheet over there. Please sign up if you're available or see me if you have questions. Um, our Awana Club is in need of bags for individually wrapped candy. Please consider, if you're able, to bring extra bags for and dropping it off at the church office if you're available to do that. Boo Bash uh, is coming up. We have need, in need of two to three volunteers to assemble the goodie bags and please see the commission, the missions committee, which is Eden, Angela, Delaney, JC, or Laura. And that is all I have, unless anybody else has anything else. I will hand the mic off to Thomas. Okay, so as you know, we've been working on getting a billboard up over on the north part of town by the fairgrounds, the old sweet shop sign. So we have on the little shelf there in the northern entryway for voting members, there's four options. Look at them, write your name down if you want, put yes in the cup that you want. They're, they're labeled, if you can read my handwriting. Okay? They look the same. Two look the same. But what it is is one says Grace Baptist Church, one says Grace Church, because we thought Grace Baptist, the elders thought it looked a little busy, but we're not going to make that decision. Okay? That's what the congregation's for. We've got two different looks with two different verbiages for Grace Baptist Church or Grace Church. Okay? We're going to leave it up for two weeks because there's not a lot of people here, so that way everyone gets a vote because this is for voting members. But feel free to look at it. Got any questions, comments, concerns? See Ryan. I'll blame him. <laughs> or me or Daniel, any of, the, any of the elders. Brian's off at uh, Taekwondo camp, you know, chopping things or something. I don't know. That's all I got. Thanks. All right. Um, at this time, I'd like to welcome the Operation Christmas Child um, up to – do their speech, so. Fergie, uh, <laughs> thank you. I'm Charlene Schultz, I'm from Nelson, Nebraska, and I'm blessed to be a year-round volunteer with Operation Christmas Child. We'd like for you to be one, too. Being a year-round volunteer means that you're available throughout the year to encourage people to pack shoeboxes. You would be working with hundreds of other volunteers across the country. Training would be provided, and you'd be part of a team. We have five teams. Deb and I are on the church relations team. Each member on that team is responsible to interact with about 20 churches. We encourage project leaders support them and uh, visit churches that might be willing to join us and start packing shoeboxes if they haven't before. 
Then we also have a community relations team and we have a student relations. They do the same thing, but with a different population. There are businesses, 4-H clubs, um, scouts that will pack shoe boxes. The community relations person works with those people and student relations, students are a fluid population, so we need to keep interacting with them, keep the vision going so students pack shoe boxes. Then we also have a prayer team. Most important thing is prayer. If it's not backed by prayer, there's not a lot of point in doing it. So the prayer team gets together to pray periodically. They keep prayer requests circulating amongst the teams, keep people informed, and call special prayer times once in a while. Like if we're having a project leaders workshop, then we have a special prayer time for that. And the fifth team is logistics. That's the person that gets all those shoe boxes where they need to be. They work with the processing centers or the collection sites and get the boxes to the processing centers. So being a year-round volunteer gives you something to do that really matters. It matters for eternity because every shoebox is a chance for a child to hear the gospel. And it's very interesting to interact with the churches and hear their stories about how they do things and to share ideas with them. And it's really exciting when a church decides to pack shoeboxes that hasn't packed before. So if God's calling you, he has prepared you and equipped you. Pray about it, and if you feel that God's calling you, talk to Kayleen and get an application. Good morning. I'm Deb Carlson. I'm from Hampton. All right, so um, my first why is for the kids. I have a heart for kids as a retired teacher and a mom and a nana. Um, and just to be able to serve kids and minister to kids. So kids are important to God as well. So just to think about those shoe boxes going to kids all over the world and impacting their life. It's a simple but a life-changing gift, not just for the kids, but for their families, for their communities, and for those local churches as well. And then another why for me is the Great Commission. So I know that God has called me to share the gospel, and, you know, as a retired person, I don't really go that many places. So as an OCC volunteer, I can help the churches to pack their boxes, which go around the world to, um, to help those children in the ends of the earth, really. And then the other why is, like Shirley talked about, is we have a team. So I'm not doing this by myself. Um, I know that I have the prayer support of my team members, and um, we have workshops, we do um, service events together, so we work together, and, you know, it's a great organization. If you know anything about Samaritan's Purse in general, they're a great organization, um, very detail-oriented, and there's lots of support, and it's also just a great mission to be able to share the gospel with kids around the world. Thank you. Thank you both of you for sharing. I appreciate that. Um, I'm going to put this over here because I think I'm on. Thank you. I am Kayleen Hosier. I'm the area coordinator, which means I'm over about 20 counties. And uh, once you serve there, you get a privilege of being on a, on a vision trip. There you can see the picture of us on a vision trip. Uh, we were able to go to Lima, Peru May uh, in May. And um, so I'm just going to share, does that shoebox really make a difference in a person and, and how? So first I want to set the, the, 
the mindset of how what we're looking at. So when a child goes to distribution, and you're going to see some pictures of, of the pastors and, and children here, um, they get the greatest gift. And when you give your $10, not only are you shipping the box to the countries, well over 100 countries, I think it's 170 countries, it's shipping, it's teaching pastors to get share the, the message, the hope of the gospel message uh, to a child-like friendly way, and uh, it's also paying for the greatest gift. You know, the children receive the gift of a shoebox, but what the message is, the greater message is, there's a greater gift, and that's Jesus. So they receive that, and uh, after this service, I'm going to be sharing more uh, during the Sunday school hour, and so I'll have a little bit more time. It's going to be just a tidbit today. But anyway, they get that, then they go to the greatest journey, which is the 12-week disciple-making uh, program. And then after they graduate, they receive, this is all in their language, I think about 170 different languages have been cha translated translated into and then they do they get the new testament the average child that receives this has read through that in one year's time as they follow up so um let's take us some pictures see some pictures of it um do i need to do oh you know what yeah high tech i got to turn it on yeah technology all right there it is. Does the shoebox make a difference? Well, you can see in, the, in these children's, uh, after they receive the shoebox, they've got a little mask and a frog. Who, what little girl doesn't need a frog, right? So the picture that Operation Christmas has is they do the distribution, they evangelize, they do the greatest journey, discipleship, what does that equal? Multiplication. And as you look at these pictures, we're going to show you more pictures. You can see the multiplication. Where there was children that received the shoebox maybe 10 years ago, and now they are the youth that's doing the uh, distribution. <clears throat> On the left, you see Pastor Amen. Uh, Pastor, start, her husband started the church about 30 years ago. He's gone on to be with the Lord, but she's continuing this ministry. Beside her is her granddaughter. She led the distribution beautifully. And uh, it, it's some challenges because in Lima, Peru, 74% um, of them are Catholic. And that doesn't mean the Catholic like we know here in the U.S. There's no mention of Jesus. It's all about the saints. So it's a little bit of a challenge to be an evangelic and teaching about the gospel. So that's some of their challenges. Pastor Felix on the right, this was his first. Now, Pastor Amen has been able to uh, do the distribution probably the last 10 years. And they've also been able to start nine churches. That's one of the things that really grabbed me is that through this, through your shoeboxes, you are helping build new churches. Um, so then Pastor Felix is on the right, and the awesome thing about that, and I, when I, before I went on this trip, I knew that, I asked someone, I said, so what, what is it that you don't see on those videos? And they said, the pastors, the pastors are jumping up and down because those shoe boxes represent an opportunity to share the gospel. It's an opportunity to build their church. That's what I noticed about Pastor Felix. Pastor Felix used to be a gang member, and uh, God grabbed his heart, and he became a pastor. And then he was kind of, you know, going to different locations. His church never took off. But you know what? When he had the distribution, the children, and, and the format that they have, they have some fun music, and then they have the gospel message. The children have an opportunity to raise their hands and just imagine Pastor Felix, just delight as he sees 50 children who've never gone to church and they're raising their hand and saying, yes, I want Jesus. Because now he's got children. And then who's going to bring, the children are going to bring mom and dad. He's going to have a church. After God taking his heart from being a gang member and working on the church, and now he's got a church. That's the privilege of, of that shoebox and the message. Okay, on the left is Pastor Daniel. And one of the things that has touched me with his 
they started a church, uh, I believe in the 1980s. It was in the Red District. There was gangs, there was terrorists. And because of the presence of the church, uh, they all diminished. Now, he ministers to the poor and the extreme poor. Um, so each time we would go to a distribution, we would pray on the bus, and then we would go in, and then afterwards, we had the privilege of praying with the pastor. Pastor Daniel asked us, if, if we would die, would you, do you know where you would live? And we're like, yes, yes. And he's, okay, you're not going back home, you're staying here. So... <laughs> Anyway, but Pastor Daniel, the thing that struck me, he is so devo devoted in sharing the gospel that um, it was a what they call a rooftop church, and we were up there, but he was down in the other because he had invited some of the parents so he could share the gospel. As the children are hearing the gospel up on the, on the top, he's sharing the gospel with uh, the parents. He is so dedicated, and that's very much the reason probably that you don't see the, the, the gang and the terrorists in that area. To the right, you can see me in action. Afterwards, you know, we pray and we give them a, a kit. And so they had me give to uh, Gloria Rubio. The story with, with uh, Gloria is the pastor was not there. The pastor was actually in the ICU. Um, he had had some head trauma. And uh, at that time when we were there, they didn't know if he was going to make it. So it was really touching to be able to pray with she and her, her four daughters. But, um, but he asked her to leave his side there in the ICU to come and meet with us. And uh, what a pleasure it was to see her uh, and, and just pray for her. But the, the good story is, by prayer, he's home. He's home. So praise God. Um, again, when you talk about the multiplication, you can see where that little gal, she just came from um, the distribution, but look who's reading that book. They, uh, the mom is just soaking it up, and you can just see on the right where they have got those books, and they're soaking it up. They're just looking at every page. Um, and if you guys want to look at these books, you're more than welcome. I'd be glad for you to thumb through and look at those. The thing that I didn't realize is when the children left, and you guys have probably have done children's ministry, quite often you send the kids, you give them, and then one of them forget. Not one of those books were left behind. They, in fact, I've heard many of the children, they, that's some of their favorite thing is those books, telling about Jesus and learning about Jesus. So they're just soaking that up what a, and, and hearing about Jesus and the hope that they have in eternity. Again, they touched on the volunteers, and uh, be glad to talk to you. If God would be prompting, prompting you to be a part of the team, we would be glad to uh, pray with you and see if God is calling you. I love this picture of a little gal who, um, she has nothing. She took that box, and she put it down, and she's loving on that little doll that was in the shoe box. And then here's the little guy, he's kissing the box. Does your box make a difference? Yes, makes a difference in a child. They hear the gospel very punch for the first time. They go home, they share with their parents. Um, I heard the story of Sarah, and Sarah was in a Muslim country she went to a distribution. Now, the children do not know that they're going to get anything. They're just going. They've been invited. The pastor has built a relationship with them, says that they're going to have this. They come. And so Sarah got a box. She heard the gospel. She responded to the gospel. She goes home and shares it with her parents. This little nine-year-old shares it with her parents, and they come to know the Lord. The Shiite Muslim family, extended family, find out. And they're like, you can't be a Christian. You're a Muslim. And they come and they talk to her and they receive Jesus. And, and Sarah, when it was all done, she shared the gospel with 40 people and they came to know the Lord. So the most important thing to put in those shoeboxes is prayer. There was a lot of prayer going on. 
I don't know if we could do this video. It's just a 30 minute, is it something you have to push or do I need to push? Let's see if we can do it. Oh, there it is. Oh, maybe I could have charged it. When you pack a, a shoebox, it's like planting a seed. And when you plant that seed, you're planting Jesus in a heart of a child. So thank you very much. Did not need an adult today. I adulted myself. Okay, so we're going to do prayers real quick. Anybody got prayers? Obviously, we've got to praise for the insurance coming through for us. Who knew insurance companies were good? Anybody got any prayers? A pain. Okay, so Mel's got a pain stimulator. Okay, I'm, I'm hearing today. Uh, procedure on Tuesday. Uh, anything else? Any other prayers? Uh, obviously for Kyle's friends um, that were involved in that horrible motorcycle accident out west. Continue prayers for the family. I don't have any further updates on that, but we do need to keep them in our prayers. Uh, Travel mercies, obviously, for like half the church uh, out in Shadron, uh, celebrating with Daniel Lucht and his April, his bride. See, that's, that's why I keep her around. She keeps me in line. Um, and anybody who's, you know, been in town heard all the junk junk chaos. So prayers for all the accidents, all the first responders, and just the shoppers in general. Ugh, junk junk. Anything else, guys? Any praises? Any praises? Oh, right. I do have a note about Junior. Uh, Junior, that's what I got. Um, he needs prayers. He's having a new uh, feeding tube put in. This week? Okay, this week. Okay, so we got Junior. Janet. Okay. Um, did, did I not have that on right? Okay, good. I'm glad it's not me. Yes. 
Okay. Well, let's bow our heads, and as I'm praying for our needs, what? Did I miss one? I'm sorry. I can't see you. What's up? It does. And we, we need to be blessed. Pray for them and just say, we're not sure, you know. <laughs> bless, bless them and pray for us. Will do. Anything else before I continue on? Because I can't see up here well. Okay. Uh, as, as I'm praying and we go through prayers, um, can the ushers come up and we will we'll pray for the offering. As always, this offering, is, is it's, it's a time of worship. We don't require, we don't check your tax returns, we don't do anything like that. It's between you and God and what you're able to do, and we're so thankful and appreciative for what you do. Okay, let's bow our heads. Lord, we just thank you for this time today. We thank you for the insurance company and your provision there. Um, you're saving us a ton of money, and we're so thankful for that. And we're so thankful for the nice uh, roofing company next to Janet who showed up and, and was a real need, and that you gave her the courage. We're so thankful. Lord, please be with our nation and, and Israel. It's, it's looking ugly, Lord. We know in the end that you are the winner, and we're so very thankful for that. And uh, just we're, we're, we're thankful for that. Lord, be with Junior and his procedure and Mel with his procedure and stairs, apparently. <laughs> And we're so thankful, Lord, for everything. Um, we're thank you for this offering. Please bless it, as you always do, and give us the wisdom to spend your money. It's not our money. It's not the church's money. It's your money, Lord, and we're so thankful for it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Father God, we thank you so much that you are the very rock and refuge in which we can build our lives upon. Thank you so much for being the cornerstone, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your sacrifice on the cross in order to bridge that great divide that we can now absolutely reside in your power and in your strength to live our lives every single day. And so I pray that we would live in in, for your honor and for your glory. And may our worship this morning bless you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. You, you going to come up here, Mel? Uh, I'm not going to do this by myself. <laughs> I don't know. Don't ask me. I'll break it. He did. We need an adult. <laughs> he turns them on about as well as I do. Okay, so we're just going to kind of go through Mel's testimony um, today. Mel and Linda have been coming here for a few years now. Um, and part of Beast Feast that ended up didn't happening is we were just going to have some of our local community um, and church members kind of just talk about life and God and what he's done for them and, and church and all that fun fun garbage. So that's kind of what we're doing today. Um, oh, yeah, I, I give very technical words here. So we're just going to go through a couple cheat sheet questions because I'm not going to do this out of sheer memorization. Um, tell us about your testimony. Okay, for, I'll qualify first. I am not a speaker. Neither am I. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I was uh, an only child. I was born and raised on the farm, and uh, I was raised in a unchurched home. Uh, my parents were good parents, but uh, never ever uh, considered going to church. And uh, so I didn't know anything about it. I, I might have been in a church building a couple of times for a wedding or a funeral as I, as I grew up. So then uh, I went on to college and uh, between my junior and senior year uh, I, I got married in uh, July of, doesn't matter, 1970 I guess. And then in uh, March of 1971, uh, we were in a car accident, and my wife was killed in that accident. And I, uh, her, all it did was popped her neck. She didn't have a bruise, nothing, just popped her neck and killed her. But I was broke up big time, uh, broken pelvis, broken ribs, broken jaw, punctured lung, d just a few things. and. Uh, I, as the cars ended up, the front wheel of our car was setting on the little ledge of her, the, the other car's door. And the only thing that held the car up was that little ledge. And I, I could not believe, it could, and I was laying right under that tire, that wheel. So if it would have slid off, it would have dropped and killed me. And I, I started thinking, there's something, there's something higher, something here that I don't know about, because uh, I, I shouldn't have survived that. And I, I, it, it haunted me for a long time. And uh, so uh, time went on. Uh, then uh, a few years later, I, I met another young lady, and we ended up, uh, she was a, uh, uh, a gal went to the Baptist church, and I just started going to church with her. We ended up getting married, and uh, through that experience, uh, probably I started learning the scriptures, had an awesome pastor. He, he was very patient with me, and... Uh, <clears throat> So, uh, I guess 
A little humor I'll throw in. We, the house that we lived in, uh, the garage was in the alley. And uh, my parents had come down that weekend to visit, and uh, we got a snowstorm, so the, the alley was all drifted shut. And so I, my dad and I went out to survey it. Well, as I walked back to the house, I looked, and I said, there comes the pastor. What's he doing? You know, and, uh, so, uh, and I couldn't get the, the snow shovel out of the house without having to see him and talk to him. So anyway, uh, I did. It was just funny how God said, you're going you're gonna to talk to him today. So then uh, probably a year after I attended that church, uh, I got saved and uh, uh, was, uh, life is, has never been the same since. It was uh, such, such a glorious thing. Then, uh, I guess, went through life, grew in Christ. Uh, we ended up attending a number of different churches as we moved around the state and uh, uh, just grew and, and uh, uh, got to feeling very good about it. And, and uh, when we come to St. Paul or I came to, well, I'll, I'm getting out of line here. <laughs> so then uh, I can... When I, uh, let's see, it was in 2014, uh, my wife then got colon cancer, and she passed away. So uh, then I was uh, lost. You know, we'd, we'd been married like 42 years, and we'd had a, a great time together, and it was, I was very lost, and at that point, I was so thankful that I was involved in, in a great church at that time, and uh, several of my Christian brothers uh, come come to me. They bolstered me up and uh, got together uh, probably once or twice a week with, with all of them at different times, and that was such, I was so thankful for that, to have Christian brothers and sisters that that uh, would do that and so then uh, then the kind of the more recent part of the story is that uh, uh, Linda my present wife uh, we had worked together at the same uh, a bank two banks actually for about 20 years and we had known each other my family had uh, uh, in fact, my two kids had worked for Linda at the bank some through the summer and so forth. And so we were good friends. We just, uh, uh, we was always able to share things and, and new things was kept in, in private and so forth. So then uh, God brought us together. And uh, so uh, Linda and I have been married uh, be nine years in November. And it's... Uh, you got the number right. Good job. I, th I hope so. We'll find <laughs> <laughs> but one thing you learn, or I did, uh, how much, probably how, how much of the time we are too critical with our spouses or whatever, you know, and, and after you've, you've lost a spouse, you realize, man, we should have been more forgiving and uh, more loving and more trusting. And so uh, uh, Lynn and I have a wonderful relationship. And uh, uh, we started coming to church here about three years ago. So that's the long-winded answer long of my road along the way. Long-winded, short, short answer. Okay. All right. Um, you know what? Uh, you kind of touched on this about, um, so we're just going to, try to expand on okay. this when you went through a, a crisis of faith you mentioned that your your, your brothers in Christ kind of surrounded you um, kind of expand on that if you want to yeah well uh, I guess you really realize uh, how much how much God means to you and 
and, and it made me realize how I need to reach out to other people when, when they are in a crisis. And uh, I mean, I, I, before that, I never thought a lot about it, you know, but, uh, you know, I would be feeling down or whatever. And I would say this, I don't know, for me, it was one of the hardest things to go to church after my wife passed away. I, it's just the way it was. I, and I, uh, of course, I would go and I loved to hear women's voices singing. I, you know, just, I didn't have a woman's voice around anymore. But uh, it, uh, uh, it was just so rewarding, and I just thanked God that he kept bringing people to me and uh, supporting me and strengthening me. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's one thing that, you know, when we're going through a crisis, it's very easy, even though it shouldn't be, to shut out God because we're mad at him, we're hurt by him, um, and, and God knows that. So he sends people to knock on our door and, Call us, text us, whop up upside the head when we're being stupid, you know, mm-hmm. whatever we need. Well, that's the awesome part about God is he's there whether we want him to be there or not. And he sends people our way. Um, uh, well, one final question. Um, you worked in banking and finance. You mentioned that. And um, what are some lessons you've learned about faith and finances and all that fun garbage? Did I do something? <laughs> Thank goodness for Eden. That's right. That's why we have an adult around. <laughs> yeah. uh, one of the biggest challenges that I had after I became a Christian, I mean, I, I grew up on the farm. I went to college, pretty much did it all on my own, and then uh, uh, became a Christian, and then I started hearing things about tithing. I, I didn't know anything about that, and I was, I was, to be honest, I was bitter about that. I thought, you know, here, I went to college, I worked hard to get through school, and got a job, and now they want me to give it away. You know, I just, it didn't make sense to me. And then over time, I started reading scripture, and, and it, it told us that we were, we were to tithe. And, you know, okay, I guess. And I'd had numerous... Uh, People say, well, you can't outgive God. You know, he, if, he'll, if you take care of him, he'll take care of you. And, and uh, <clears throat> this was so true. It just, I never, through my lifetime, ever uh, struggled. I was very fortunate that never struggled, never worried about where the next dollar was going to come from. And a lot of times we gave when we wondered, how are we going to do this, and why did we do it? But God definitely uh, took care of us. And, uh, you know, I, I, I always bring in the uh, Financial Peace University. We went through those classes and learned, uh, you know, budgeting and, and uh, how to spend our money and, and how, you know, the, the partners, the husband and wife, really have to be on the same page uh, it, or or life's not going to work real well that you know you got to agree or uh, compromise I guess is, compromise is a better word on how you're going to budget your money and and uh, uh, to to make it work and, and of course I got to see a lot of I was in banking I was a, a ag lender for 47 years and I I saw the gamut, everything from couples doing extremely well to not so well. And uh, it, you ended up getting into a lot of counseling with that. Yeah, I mean, tithing is one of those things. Um, uh, we, we talked about it in my Sunday school class, uh, the youth, uh, a couple weeks ago when we were talking about faith and tithing. It's, it's, it takes faith. Um, you know, I'll be honest, guys, some days it's really hard to write that check. Because you got bills or, you know, um, an army to feed <laughs> or, you know, stuff breaks. But, you know, God shows mm-hmm. up 
with that. I mean, I've, I've experienced that. My parents have experienced that. Uh, there was one time we had a medical bill. My mom did not know how she was going to pay that medical bill, and my pastor, Dr. Bob, showed up with a check. Mm-hmm. Just and no one told them what the bill was. Yeah. No one mentioned that we needed the money, my parents, but Bob showed up with some money for us. Uh, so God does show up, and sometimes it's hard to lean into that because we are Americans, we are Midwesterners, and we'll pick ourselves up from the bootstraps. Darn it, I don't need no help, but we do, and that's a huge thing that we have to lean on. God shows up in amazing ways. I mean, our church has got a very practical way. We're getting free insur- yeah. uh, free air and furnace, and yeah, I'm just blown by that, so I'm going to keep banging on that drum. That's a that's perfect a very example. Perfect practical way to show hey look we thought we were gonna have to spend money we didn't have and we don't have to because god showed up in a huge way oh yeah no they don't the insurance company i didn't know there was good insurance companies out there i mean I, I've, I've dealt with them for years at work and they can be a a nightmare but we've got a good one we've got a good shape uh, agent uh dakota right I mean, he has bent over backwards over the past year for us. So, you know, praise God for putting people in the right spot. I mean, he set it all up. We didn't see it coming. I mean, I remember last year when the lightning strike happened, we were going, oh, no. And out of it, we've got a newer and improved computers. We got um, a copy machine, a really, really nice one that was covered. Uh, We're getting um, the... uh, the furnace and air conditioner, a bunch of electronics, TVs. I mean, we've gotten a lot replaced that would have cost the church over time thousands of dollars just because technology wears out, computer breaks, things like that. I mean, the computers that we had in the office were, they worked technically, you know, if you, if you fed the squirrel in the cage <laughs> to run it. But because of that, we, have, we paid our deductible which I don't remember how much that was because that was last year and I don't do math well. There we go, $1,800. We have replaced tens of thousands of dollars of equipment. Now, yeah, did we like the fact that there was a lightning strike and did that make chaos? You better believe it. But you know what? We as elders, I remember, and I just remember when the, uh, a month ago when this air conditioned stuff kicked up, I'm like, hey, guys, and we all said it. God's got this. I don't know how. But God's got this, and that's something that we have to do just in our own personal lives to get through Mm -hmm. everything. So that's all we got. Uh, I'll pray, and the worship team will come up. So thank you. Thank you very much. We'll make it work. (laughs) All right. God, thank you for this time of testimony. Um, to to hear a little bit about Mel's amazing story. I mean, Lord, that would have crippled anybody um, just through multiple points in his life, Lord, and you have provided for him, you've showed up to him, and Lord, I pray that you will be able to use his testimony um, and his example to lead others to you as they go through hard times, good times, and indifferent, Lord, and we're so thankful. Amen. We invite you to please stand with us as we sing and end our service with yet not I, but through Christ.
quick guys uh sunday school young adults senior adults and youth there's like three of you uh we're all going to meet in here to hear about uh, operation christmas child that's going to be our lessons uh the rest of y'all uh, minions know where to go um that way and that way uh, be nice to your teachers um let us pray and we'll 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 get out of here god we thank you for today's uh speakers uh, operation christmas child and mel uh, today, Lord, we're so thankful for them, and it all kind of tied together about believing in you, having faith, planting those seeds, and just leaning on you, um, Lord, and just help us as we go throughout the week to lean on you, to plant those seeds, and uh, and just follow what you want in our lives, and we're so thankful for you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <laughs>